hit mute on their microphone until we get to the Q and A. That'll make the recording a little bit better. Okay. So first, I want to introduce Miss Susan. Susan and I roomed together. Oh my gosh, when we were in Kentucky, it was so cool. Um, she's brilliant. Top twenty in Nancy Joe Ryan's team in sales. Already earned to Hawaii, of course. And uh, she has as many pair of high heel shoes as I do. And do that. <laughs> is going to tell you all kinds of ways to get booking. So I'm going to mute myself and uh, take it away, Miss Susan. Okay. So um, I love the fact that Kathy asked me to talk on bookings. Um, I joked last night that um, it's appropriate to talk on bookings when you're short on bookings because I feel your pain as well. And one of the reasons I'm in the top 100 of the company um, is because I'm tenacious. I don't give up. So I might give you some ideas tonight and um, they might not work the first time you use them. So you're going to move on to a different idea and I'll give you bunches of different ways that you can um, get out there and get some bookings. It, one shoe size doesn't fit all and the same shoe might fit later. So for an example, um, one of the things that I recommend is if you have any of your season, uh, your old mini catalogs, these ones are going out of um, season September 1st. So these have the new products that came in the spring summer when we got the new catalog. You're gonna grab these and you're gonna print up six up labels. So I put these and I'll pass this on to Kathy. These are just shipping labels and they have the host bonus special for August, okay? Because I'm still trying to book the end of August. I am not giving up. Like you, you cannot think about this like it's the, um, oh, I don't have any bookings. I'll just start booking the new season. You don't wanna do that. You, if you're not fully booked for uh, August, you don't talk about the September's host special. You might say to the hostess, um, especially if you have the new quick cooker, uh, you might say something like, I'll bring it and I'll cook in it for your show. And then when somebody books a September show, you'll be able to get this at half price. Sorry. But um, So you're going to take the mini catalogs. You're going to put a sticker on it. I put these in a number 10 envelope because they travel through the mail a lot better. Although you can tab these with those little round stickers, they'll, they'll end up shredded in my opinion. I mean, there's a spot for you to put an address on them, but Stick them in a number 10 envelope. It still costs a, a regular stamp to send them. And um, who are you going to send these to? So if you're not a new consultant, the first thing I'm going to recommend you do is you're going to go back 10 shows and you're going to start there. And you're going to start with anybody that was an outside order on those shows. So it, when you look at your order summary, OO will be right next to their name. And so you're going to go back to those people and you're going to mail 10 of these every other day. Okay, not every day because you need to give yourself time to do follow-ups. And so you're gonna to have to write down who you've mailed this to. So you're gonna have a, um, a, a sheet of paper, you know, I use these little like notepad sheets of paper, put the date at the top, and then say like um, uh, Val Kerr's show, and then you're gonna say, you know, Samantha Smith, Tommy Jones, you know, Susie Moulton, whatever. You're gonna write down your 10 people that you mailed mini catalogs to. You're gonna stamp them, you're gonna mail them out. Then what you're going to do is you're going to do um, follow-up phone calls on those 10. So you're going to give it a day or two for it to show up. And that's why I say you don't want to keep sending 10 at a time because you should only mail as many mini catalogs as you can actually follow up on. Now, if I ask for a raise of hands, now I don't, Margo and Corey and Joanne and Joanne, every, all you guys are, I can't even see your faces. I can only see most of my team. But if I asked you to raise your hand, I bet you would say you hate the telephone. So guess what? You're in good company. We all hate the telephone. But guess what? The telephone is your friend. Repeat after me. The phone is my friend. It is a money-making machine. Here's why. I could be texting these same words to you, but you're not going to get my energy, my excitement, my smile on my face. You're not going to get any of that through a text, okay? Unless, they, unless they're your best friend and they know you really well, it's not transferring. So uh, first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to stand up when you go to make a phone call because when you're standing up and you're pacing around, you have more energy. You're also going to smile. You've probably heard that. You're going to smile. You can hear a smile through um, your voice. If you're sitting and you're making phone calls like this, it comes across like this. But if you pick 
up your energy and you're like, really, you got to psych yourself up for this stuff. So um, here are some of the things that I've been saying on the phone. And so um, Saturday and Sunday, my husband and daughter went and did father daughter date stuff. And I had tweaked my back. So I opted not to go and I just stayed home and I cranked out. Um, I have all of these old door prize slips from a vendor event that I did this summer that um, I had followed up with some of them, but I needed to follow up again with them. So here's what I said. So Kimberly's the first girl. I was like, hey, Kimberly, it's Sue with the Pampered Chef. We met at Concord Market Days uh, in May. I'm just following up with you because I didn't want you to miss this. We just announced at National Conference that August is our host appreciation month. So not only do you earn free products, half price products, and discounted products with Pampered Chef, but you're going to get 50% more free products in August than my poor hostesses in July. And you're going to get entered into two huge sweepstakes just by hosting a show. The first sweepstakes, we are picking 20 guests to get $350 worth of bonus products. But the grand prize, which of course I hope you take me on, is a trip for two to a spa in Scottsdale, Arizona. So I cannot even believe that they're doing this. They've never done anything like this before, and I'm really excited to offer it to you. We could do a live cooking class if you want. We could do a virtual Facebook party. You could do a catalog show, a bridal shower, a fundraiser, you name it. So I would love to give you all the details. I'm going to message you or text you. Um, if you have any questions or you definitely want to get on my calendar, I only have a few dates left. So give me a call. And then I hang up the phone. Um, so that's call one. Now you need two layers of communication always. So layer one of communication could be your mini catalog that you mail. And layer two of communication can be the phone call. Layer one can be the phone call. Layer two could be a Facebook uh, messenger with the, um, the special... Now, I don't know, Kathy, I don't know if on the website they actually have the sweepstakes information of Scottsdale and the extra bonus. Um, I just have been sending pictures that I took from National Conference of the screenshots. They do? Okay. So, um, I'll, Kathy will post that and I'll post it when I find it. Um, so, I've just been using the screenshots that I took from National Conference and I've been sending that to people. And um, if I don't hear back from them in two days, again... Your job is to build a relationship with these people. So you might call back or text and say, hey, if now isn't the time, um, hang on just a second. Um, if now isn't the time, just let me know and I'll roll you out um, a new mini catalog when the new catalog comes out, something like that. So, so that you're asking for a response from them. You're asking them to get back to you about yes or no. So that's one way of getting uh, bookings. Um, the second way is if you didn't do full service checkout to your outside orders on your recent shows. So I know a lot of the times um, I don't follow up with those people. They place online orders and I send them a thank you email. You know, I'll click, we get an email every time somebody places an order on a show. So I leave it in my inbox. I click, I open the email to see what they purchased. If they purchase something that I have a cookbook to, like manual food processor, um, the micro cookers, those type of things. You know, we have those booklets that Pamper Chef consultants have compiled. Um, I will hit the, the email on it and I'll reply to them and I'll say, you know, hey, Donna, thanks so much for placing your order on Esther's show. Um, I just wanted to give you um, some recipes to go with your manual food processor when it arrives. Uh, by the way, I'm not sure if you know, but Esther got free half price and discounted products by gathering some friends together. I would love to help you get whatever else is on your wish list. Would you like me to send you the bonus item? So don't automatically send it. You're, at, you're trying to get a, a response from them, okay? We're trying to get a two-way conversation going. Um, we just learned uh, yesterday, Judy Joel came to New Hampshire, and she was talking about 25 two-way conversations a day. Monday through Friday, five days a week. Well, it doesn't have to be Monday through Friday, but five, five times out of seven a week. And so a two-way conversation is I text you and you respond, positive or negative. I could say, um, you know, hey, Sarah, um, I'm really excited. There's a huge bonus, uh, a trip for two to Scottsdale, Arizona, to a spa. Do you want more details? 
And if she says, no, I'm all set, that's a two-way conversation. She has responded. If she says, sure, what the heck are you talking about? Pampered Chef's now doing spas. <laughs> you know, then you go, yes, let me tell you all about it. Um, so two-way conversations. You email them, they get back to you. You text them, they get back to you. You call and don't get an answer machine, but you actually talk to somebody, that's a two-way conversation. If you do 25 two-way connections every day, five days a week, and you do that for a month, you are gonna have some bookings because this you're building a relationship, okay? And relationships is what this whole business is about. People need to like you before they buy from you, okay? So we don't wanna be a pushy salesperson, but we do wanna be an excited salesperson. So I'm calling people and saying, oh my God, you are some of my favorite past hosts. And I sent an email about this bonus special, but I didn't want you to miss out because I know we send a lot of emails and people get buried. I wanted to personally reach out to you. So now I'm making it personal to them, right? Um, so this two-way conversation, keep in mind that the 25 two-way connections, that same person might be on your list each day for four days. That's okay. So let's say I reached out to Kathy and I said, um, there's a sweepstakes for a trip for two to a spa in Arizona, all expense paid uh, for hosting a show in August. Do you want more details, Kathy? And she responds back and says, sure. And then I respond and I say, do you want me to call you? Are, are you around tonight? And she says, no, call me tomorrow. So now she's on Tuesdays, but then she's on Wednesdays because I call her tomorrow and she actually answers the phone, right? So she's still another one of my 25 two-way connections. So what we're trying to get you to do is start out by um, connecting with people because everything boils down to connections. And also it boils down to... Um, you want them to do business with you again. So you want to be the type of person that they want to call. Um, I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but this is the um, fundraising information that they announced at conference for those of you guys that went to conference. And it is about the teacher uh, boxes that the classrooms are going to be able to get. I did not realize it, but it was brought to our attention that that is for September and October only. So there is a time frame on these boxes. I did not know that. So all the more reason for us to get on the horn now. So you want to call anybody who's a teacher. So maybe we all get on the phone and we call our best friend and we say, who do you know personally that's a teacher that's on Facebook that's one of your friends? And she gives you a list of their teacher friends or your kids' teachers, right? You write those all down, you go to your friend, Mary Beth, that's my best friend, I go to her Facebook page, and now I friend request all of those names that she just told me that are teachers, right? Because we have mutual friends. Then I private message them and I say, hey, Kathy, Mary Beth said that you're a teacher at the Epsom Central School. I wanted to let you know about a um, promotion that Pampered Chef is doing in September and October where your school and another school in addition to getting free pro um, in addition to getting um, fundraising money I don't know, I'd, I'd word it better than that I'm having a moment this is what happens when you get over 50 you get these words and you're like what um, so you uh, you want to say um, in addition to getting the benefits of a fundraiser you're also going to get a classroom box of cooking tools that you can use to teach math skills and cooking and blah 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 um, uh, would you like more information about it? And, or who would I talk to? So you're asking a teacher, who would I talk to? They might send you to the PTO. They might send you to the head of the seventh grade DC trip. You know what I'm saying? So some of my biggest fundraisers, especially if you guys are new consultants, some of you might be stuck either in your family and friend circle or you're in the same group of people that keep hosting the same Pampered Chef shows, which we love repeat customers, don't get me wrong, but your first show might be an $800 show, and then the second show with those same people is a $500 show, and by the third show, you're at $400 because they've been getting everything they need, and you need fresh blood. You need people outside of that family and friend circle, right? So here's what you do. You've got to scratch, dig, and do not give up until you have called every school, um, every PTA person that you can find and you're going to offer this fundraiser because one fundraiser might have 200 students in it, right? 
And those 200 students only have the fact that they go to the same school in common. They don't have the same family, friends, neighbors, relatives, or coworkers. So all you need is a couple bookings from those. So now you have a whole list of 200 people that you can do customer care calls to. So I told one of my consultants this when she had run out of bookings and she was like, I totally never thought about calling all the people from that fundraiser. So, and it had been a year since she did that fundraiser. She did a, a band and chorus fundraiser that she does every year because um, they go to Disney um, and she started calling the people and she said, Hey, I'm Emily, your Pampered Chef consultant. I just want to thank you so much for placing your order last year on the band fundraiser. We are going to be doing it again this year, but I wanted to reach out to you personally because there's such a great bonus this month. I thought you might be interested in hosting a show. We're offering a sweepstake, blah, 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 whatever your pitch is for that month. So it's never too late to call people. If you've been in business uh, for more than a year, Here's one of the things I did at the beginning of the year. I was uh, trying to mail out my Christmas cards and I was trying to book my January because I really wanted Hawaii. So you all really want Disney because Disney World is going to be an amazing trip. And, and the last couple of times they did Disney, it's a trip for four. So you, I started calling all of the people that I basically did a, a scroll. Anybody who hosted a show $1,000 or over because they were going to get a, a, a handwritten Christmas card from me. I have 11,000 contacts, so not everybody's getting a Christmas card, okay? Um, so I pulled all of my hostesses, and I called, and I said stuff like, hey, Val, this is Sue Moulton with the Pampered Chef. I'm getting ready to do Christmas cards. I just want to verify are you still at 20 Fowler Road, Bosco, New Hampshire, blah, 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 blah. And she says, yes, I am. And I'll be like, awesome. How are things going? How's your year been? See, now i got a conversation going. Now I'm looking for an opening to say, hey, you want to hear what the specials are? Because guess what? This is the most amazing special ever. So you could call, hey, I'm just doing customer care calls. I just wanna follow up with my customers, make sure that you're updated in my database. I'm just calling to see if you're still getting my newsletter. Now we can tell if they're getting their newsletters because you can do a customer report and see, but you can say, you can pull those warm call reports and anybody who's clicked on any of your links, those are warm calls, meaning they are interested in Pamper Chef because they are clicking on the links. Those are the first people to call. Now, you're not going to say, hey, I noticed that you clicked on my newsletter. Or I noticed that you clicked on this recipe. They don't know that we can see this behind the scenes thing. So you're going to call and say, hey, Sally, I just want to make sure that you're still getting my newsletter. Now we know she is because she's clicked on the link. You're going to say, was there any, you know, oh, yeah, I'm still getting it. Was there anything in this month's newsletter that really caught your eye? Anything I can help you with? Do you need any new recipes? Oh, no, I'm all set. No, set. While I have you on the phone, do you have a quick minute where I can tell you what the specials are? Okay. Um, I always say, do you have a quick minute? Because most of the time they'll say yes to that. If you say is now a good time, they're often to say no. Um, okay. So that's 20 minutes. I will stop talking. I'll give everybody a chance to ask questions and, um, and I'll clarify anything that you have. And if you don't, I'll toss out some other ideas. So everybody unmute. What did you hear that you liked? What did you hear that was new that you're like, oh, maybe I'll do that? What did you hear like, oh no, I'm not doing that, that's too scary? Is there like an um, information sheet on the consultant corner about the fundraiser for the schools? Yes, there is. And um, for, uh, for Michelle and um, all of my newbies, Esther on my team, I also have um, booking your first few shows, a script that Pampered Chef gives on word choices on how to book your shows. And if you have, I don't know, Kathy, if you have any newbies on your, you're on here now, but um, one of the things that I always recommend before you even have your grand opening show is you're calling for a booking first. And if they can't do, you know, if they can't help you out by doing a grand opening, you know, doing a show for you, then I say, well, what about a catalog show? slash virtual Facebook party. And if they say, no, I really can't do that. Well, I hope you can at least make it to my grand opening. So if they said no to you once, no to you twice, they're more likely to come to your grand opening. That's like a default. Now they're feeling bad, right? So the most important thing is we want team members, then we want bookings, then we want catalog shows, then we want them to show up at, at our grand opening. So I'll give very specific word choices to my new consultants on how to do those calls so that we get the most from the call. Yes, Kathy. Um, I'm going back to the very first thing you talked about. You, you said we're gonna send out the, the mini catalogs. 
Yes. And you're going to send them out uh, 10. Did you say you went back to, like, say I had a show in June or, mm -hmm. or May. So did you go back and who did you say? And I'm sorry, because I was sure. talking to my girl, asking okay. where my girls were. So sure. who did you outside say? orders. So I start with the people who are outside orders on those shows. Outside orders. Okay. Yep. Or, I mean, I, the, the easiest thing to do is to, if you've been in the business for any length of time, pull a report of potential bookings. You know, when we click the button that says that there are potential booking, I would start with them. They're your easiest ones. If you've blown through those, you know, um, even I pulled people that, you know, booked a show but didn't hold it. That's easy. Then potential bookings. That's the second easiest. After that, I would go to outside orders. After that, here's a perfect example of something I did. I had a lady who did a thousand dollar show. I called her. She didn't want to do a show this year. I'm like, bummer. These people like spent a lot of money. So I opened the show up on my consultant corner and I started calling every guest. Oh my God, Sally, Sarah's not doing a show this year. So you can get all the free and half price and discounted products that she got. Did you know that she did a $1,200 show last year? I have everybody's name that was at the party last year. We can invite all the same guests and a few extras. What do you say? There's a great bonus special this time. So if she said no, I went to the next person. Right. And I called all the way down through until I found somebody from that same group of people because I knew that they would gather for a show. It's just that the other lady retired from her job. And I do yeah, I, I will pick a show. Like you say, I'll go back. To, what I do is I'll go back to... Um, in, in customer connection no yep. co yeah and i'll pull the month of august 2017 mm -hmm. and i will pull everybody who had a party and call them first yes if they choose not to have a party i will pull up the party like you say and call every person that placed an order and just tell them it's customer care because customer care is really an important part too so yes. real quick and I, i'm interrupting anybody else that might have questions what about virtual Oh, I'm glad you said that because I don't do a lot of virtual shows. So here's what you want to do. Um, one of the things that Karen Batty talks about a lot um, and other people who do virtual shows is um, be intentional. Take 15 minutes a day and scroll Facebook. You're going to scroll Facebook for two different things. You're going to be looking for people who are complaining about their job, complaining about needing more money, complaining about, um, you know... I don't know. Well, your air conditioner broke. So perfect example, Val's air conditioner broke. So if she had made a post like, great, it's 90 degrees humid and my air conditioner broke, I might message her and say, oh my gosh, you must be sweating your hiney off. How are you doing? So I'm going to start a conversation with Val. I'm looking for an opportunity to turn that conversation into a Pampered Chef conversation. If they don't know you're doing Pampered Chef, you might ask them, so Val, what do you do for work now? Are you still at blah, blah, blah? If I know where she worked, if I don't, I'm going to ask her because most likely they will then say, where do you work? And I don't care if you have a full-time nine to five job. Your first job is your own business. You are a business owner. So you are going to say, I own my own and then pampered chef business. Have you heard of pampered chef? And they're going to say, Oh my God, I love pampered chef. So, um, I would start with, stalking Facebook for those type of people. Then you want to go back, same thing. You're going to go back into a virtual party. I want you to go back to one of your shows and find people um, that have already commented and you're going to reach out to them for customer care call. One of my favorite things is if you've got a show going, like I have a show going and like it's crickets, nobody's talking. It's so hard to get people engaged. So what I do is um, each day I find a post and I go over to the members and I pick three people. I write their names on a piece of paper because I can't remember them for two seconds. And then I find a post and I'll go in and I'll tag and I'll say, Esther, do you have any kids? Do you think that the Quixicle is something that they would do? Or are you making adult pops and make pina colada pops when I come to your house? Ha ha ha. Right? So I'm going to tag people's names under posts that have not engaged on the party at all. Now they're going to get a notification because their name is in there. Um, also, your hostesses are your number one leads for where you're going to get parties. So ask for what you want. Hey, Sally Sue, who are the three most uh, likely people to host a show? And I'm going um, to screen share. You're going to see a whole bunch of mess on my computer. Hold on. Um, let me just move this. I want to show you my three bookings. 
um, picture. Okay, if you're desperate for bookings, I'll give you this photo. You can give this to your hostess and say to her, when three people schedule their own qualifying show, and you can see right here, qualifying show means $400 in sales, our hostess will get any one of these totally free. So you can post this on your um, virtual party. You're gonna go to your hostess and private message her and say, I just posted an image of three things that you can get 100% free when three people book a show. Underneath that post, tell everybody what which one you want. Like, oh my God, I've always wanted those stainless steel bowls. Come on, girls. Who's going to book a show for me? And let her really work at getting the bookings. And tell her you get a half price item at every feature that you um, do. Oh, I can hear somebody chat. Somebody's not muted. Um, anyway, um, so that's what I would do. I would say to her, you know, hey, you get a half price item at each of these shows. And in September, if we get a booking now, you'll be able to get that new quick cooker for half price. So um, that's what I would recommend. I would use this post. Now, I don't use this a lot. I don't use it because I don't normally need it. But if you're struggling for bookings, it is worth you paying the half price of this item on a future show. Because if you figure out the math, so muddle through it, I probably could find my words. Can you guys right. check to make sure your, your phones are muted? Somebody's chit chatting. Okay, car seat. Whoever's looking for the car seat, you're not muted. <laughs> so 400 times 23%, because that's probably what you're going to make. You're going to make $92 on each of those shows times three shows. Now you get $276 commission minimum, all right? Minimum on those shows. And it's gonna cost you, um, uh, worst case scenario, $150, okay? So you're gonna walk away with $126 in commission from three future shows, even if they only hit $400 in sales. Plus, you now, because you have had three more shows, are in front of probably another 100 people. And that's all we need. We all just want to be in front of more people because the more people you're in front of, the more likely you are to book a show. Does that all make sense? One show leads to another show. I have showed up at Shows Girl where there are three people at the show. I've walked out and it's had $300 in orders and I've closed it at $9.96. That was just last month. So you just need to be in front of enough people virtually, in person. Sometimes you go into a show and only one person books. Um, I had another show, same thing. One person booked out of three that arrived. If you wanted to cancel the show, I'm like, don't cancel the show. You have the night off. I have the night off. You have the ingredients. We're going to have a nice intimate dinner party. I showed up. We did the show. Two out of the three people booked shows. Those two future shows were $1,000 shows and they led me into streams of $1,000 shows. So you're looking for the next booking. So don't get discouraged if you get a low show because they are leading you to your next team member. They're leading you to your next booking. What else? So do you have, because um, I know you did a, um, when we used to do the, what was that talk we used to do um, on like Wednesday night or something like that. And, and uh, you did a terrific one on, the, the consultant's corner showing us how to do certain things. But do you have like a way when you go out and about how to get bookings when you're out and about? Do you have a form that you could, you could send us that, that send me that I could post to the team? Because I know that we've talked about that. Yes, I probably have a YouTube video about out and abouts because that's my strength. I am the queen of getting bookings from people you do not know. Exactly. <laughs> I so, know. Yes. I was with you in Kentucky when we were in a candy store. Oh, yeah, the candy store. store. Yes. <laughs> in Kentucky, this girl got a booking. Yeah, I we mean, were on the airplane, and I got a booking. Right. I got a booking from the flight attendant, and I got an order for a quick stir pitcher while waiting for the bathroom. So you need to be ready for business wherever you go, and you need to be intentional about it. I can't even tell you enough. If you're not prepared for business, 
you won't get business. But if you're looking for it, you're looking for an opportunity to bring it up. I stand in front of the bathroom, even though you're not supposed to, on an airplane, on purpose to bring up conversations to the flight attendants every flight I'm on. Oh, every no. Uh, no. <laughs> I am not doing that. So I'm waiting and waiting for the line. I'm like, oh, so how's this fly? Where are you coming from? Blah, 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 blah. How long have you been doing this? And oh my God, you have been so good to me. Here, let me give you one of my flyers. My contact information is on the back. And if you'll just fill out, by the way, we have these little sticky post-it notes that my newbies remind me to give you. They're um, door price slips that are on post-it notes. And I say, if you, just if you just fill out your contact information, I'll send you the specials. When you see something you like, you just give me a shout. I never get anybody not giving me their information because I'm not pushing. When you see something you like, you just give me a shout. I'll send you the specials. Everybody wants the specials. They give me their email. They give me their name. I immediately follow up. Standing in line, the lady's like, oh my God, I love the quick store picture. I really need one. Pull out my cell phone. Here, let me add the order to a show. Literally did that. I booked a show with Angela from Southwest, and she has hosted three virtual parties with me since conference six years ago. So probably every other year she's hosted for me. And one time I got paged by a hostess, I mean a flight attendant, because I had given her my contact information and everything. We had talked, and I get a phone call. And she's like, hey, Sue, it's Catherine, the flight attendant. Are you in baggage claim? I'm like, yeah, I am. She'd be like, can you out, yell out, you know, John Smith and see if he's still down there? I have their sentence, teddy bear. Like they found the teddy bear on the plane. And I'm like, John Smith, are you here? And he like looked at me. I'm like, they have your teddy bear. Somebody will be down shortly. I'm like, yep, you're good to go. We'll send it down. So like, get your name out. Wear logo gear everywhere you go. Get a tote bag that says Pampered Chef because you want to make it easy for people to approach you. And I would be happy to look um, on YouTube. You guys can go and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do have lots of videos there. I might have one on out and about. Um, I'm sure I do. So are you into Susan Moulton? Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And keep in mind, there are two Susan Moultons from New Hampshire. I am the dark haired one. Um, my picture probably has dark curly hair about this length when it's not hot. That's the way I look. <laughs> Uh, anybody else have any questions? I didn't hear from anybody else. What do you guys want to know about bookings? What are you struggling with? What, what's happening? Are you getting no's? What are they saying? All right, I'm going to pick on Joanne Gonzalez. She, Joanne is having trouble. She cannot hear. Oh. So I recorded it for her. Ken, are you on? You're Sharon, muted. are you on? Can you hear us? Margo. I'm on. <laughs> All right. Tell me what's going on in your business. Are you getting bookings? If not, what are you doing now? I, I am getting bookings, but I am always looking for new ideas to keep getting more bookings. That's what I need. I need to add more. I need to get more. So I'm writing down all these new ideas that I don't have, that I'm not okay. doing. So the, the $99, you know, stainless steel bowl, and I added two other items, that was a Michael Reeves idea. I heard a training from Michael Reeves, and he offers that to all of his hostesses for three bookings, and he is booked three months out constantly. Yeah. So he said, it is worth my peace of mind to know that I don't need to know where my bookings are coming from, if they can get me three bookings. And he said, here's how it works. You write it down. If two out of the three hit 400, you have a thousand dollar show, you have an $800 show and you have one that hits $250, you do not pay that gift out. Three shows have to hit a minimum of $400. He's like, you would be surprised at how many do not hit the three shows and have to pay it out. I did this for like, I don't know, six months or eight months. And I think I only paid out two of them. If you, if you will also send that to me, I'll, I'll post it on the team. Yes, I appreciate will. it. I will. So I would recommend trying that because then your hostess is working a little bit harder to get a bonus item. And I'm going to have to start doing that in August because I've been like scratching June, July, and August for bookings this year. It's been, I just had two cancel today. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been a tough season. And you know what? I want to encourage you guys that um, some summers are like that. And then some summers I'm doing $10,000 in business. Yeah. So don't think it's summertime. Because people are always like, oh, it's after Christmas. I'm never going to get any bookings. Three years running, January, February, and March have been my three highest months. Not November, December. Seven years for me, January has been my highest month. 
Yeah, I've had March be my highest month like for a couple of years, which is crazy. Like people are getting their tax return money. They didn't get what they wanted for Christmas. I don't know. They're having mud season problems in New Hampshire and just want to feel better. So they're buying stuff. I don't know. But like whatever you think between these four inches here is what's going to happen. So if you think, oh, I can't get any bookings. Well, of course you're not going to get any bookings. But bookings are out there. Our brain is smarter than we think it is. That's right. We just have to program it. One of the things Margot was doing was in the virtual parties, they had the little, if you get one booking, they, they have one, one gift. If you get two bookings, they have the two gift uh, that, you know, and she said that was um, successful for her. That's great. So. That's great. Anybody else that's on that's um, got some experience under your belt, got some shows going? Anybody got any problems trying to get some bookings? You can type off to the side too. They're all so quiet, Susan. They're nothing like you and I. I just told the first three people that you're having shows. <laughs> yes, good job. Michelle just signed last night at our fall kickoff. And so she basically called her best friend and she's like, you're having a Pamper Jeff show, let me tell you. And then she talked to her mom who was sitting next to her and she goes, and you're having a Pamper Jeff show. Well, Who'd you get for your third one? My sister, I text her, you're having a paper chess show. There you go. I love it. She Good just, old bossy people. She just started a new job that's like a fancy corporate job. Awesome. So I figured she, if she invites some of her coworkers, that's yeah. a whole new yes. skill. Or, and if she invited some of her old coworkers from the bridal shop, yeah. that's another area of people. Yes. And bridal shop, we do bridal registries and bridal showers. So that's going to be, I'll be talking to you guys about that, but that's another thing. So for those of you looking for bookings, um, you've probably heard about pampering a business, right? So if you stall out and you have zero business, you can pamper a business, do a pan of brownie pans, grab some catalogs and go to your local hair salon, your bank, go to local places. And you're going to say, hi, my name is Sue Moulton. I'm a local pamper, um, pamper chef consultant. I'm a businesswoman. I'm trying to get my name out there and I chose your company to pamper this week. I'm going to drop off some brownies some some catalogs. I'd love for you to look through them. I'll be back in a few days to pick up my pan. If anybody here would like to host a show and collect some orders, you'll get this bonus, blah, blah, blah. And I just wanted to get my name out there and, and give you guys a treat. No pressure not evolved, you know, and then you go to the next place and you go back a couple days later, you pick up your brownie pan, you see if there's any orders. Um, when I go into the bank, you know, when you're opening up a new account, my bank is leaving. I'm so sad. Citizens closing my local bank. So, um, I'm going to have to go open a new bank account. Well, you'd be darn tootin' that I'm going to be wearing logo gear left to right. And when I walk in, I'm going to say, hi, I'm a no. Pamper Chef consultant and I need to open a business account. Can somebody help me? And they're going to say, I love Pamper Chef. And I'm going to go, when was the last time you hosted a show? Wait till you see the new catalog. We're coming out with this new instant pot called a quick cooker, AKA R2D2. <laughs> so, um, that's what I'm going to do. So you can pamper a business. You're going to talk to bridal places about getting your name out, asking if you can put a display stand up that says uh, free bridal registries with pampered chef in your name, especially if you have an in there. I mean, those are always thousand dollar shows, but really you gotta, you gotta market yourself and keep in mind. Um, my largest fundraiser was a $12,000 fundraiser. Um, it took me a year to land that fundraiser. It was a DC eighth grade trip at Merrimack Valley. And I had to start by talking about them at my shows. And then when you're at full service checkout, you say, you know, are you interested in the business opportunity? I think you'd be great at this. They say, no. Would you like to gather some friends for a fresh and healthy weeknight meal? They say, no. I always say, what about a catalog show slash virtual party? You don't have to clean your house and you can do it in your pajamas. And they say, no. You don't give up. I, I laugh at that point. I go, all right, last two questions. Know anybody getting married and you know any organizations that need fundraising? One of the ladies, after all of those no's, says, I'm the PTA president. And I'm like, I need to talk to you. Let's chat. And so I ended up getting in the door and we did um, a fundraiser. The first year it was $4,000. The second year it was $6,000. The third year it was $12,000. And the fourth year, a new principal came in and itched me and everybody else. I don't know why. I don't know why. I had parents calling me going, my child's in seventh grade and we're expecting the Pamper Chef fundraiser and why aren't they doing it? And I'm like, call them because I really wanted to get back in. So you never know. But 
If you haven't called DC eighth grade, so I work with the seventh graders because then they go in eighth grade to DC. Band and Chorus goes to New York or Disney every other year. They're always looking for fundraisers. I'm doing one currently for the robotics team. Any of those school related ones qualify for this. So you need to get on the phone in the next week. School is starting, okay? And you need to talk to every organization. You can go right onto your local school's website and get the name. Who's in charge of robotics? Who's in charge of gymnastics, sporting events, all of that. Because you could be running multiple fundraisers. I do the equine club at my local, you know, the little horseback riding club. They do a great fundraiser every year. So reach out to schools, especially August and September. Thank you so much, Miss Susan. Yay. We appreciate it. We will record it um, and I'll post it. I'll also send you the recording. So if you need it for your, um, you know, do. for your team, I do. And, um, we definitely appreciate you helping us out. You're welcome. Bye everyone. Good bye. to see you. All right. Bye.